Hello, listeners. How are you? It's it's me here, Mike Bennett, obviously, uh, dropping a podcast into my podcast feed because that's what podcast feeds are for. Uh, and it's been a while since I've done one, so I thought I'd do one. Um, no, this is not the, the start of Underwood and Flinch Season 5. That will be uh, somewhere in 2024. Uh, no, this is just a kind of, you know, just a catch-up podcast to, to keep you in my loop uh, as to what I'm doing. So what am I doing? I'm enjoying the summer here in Ireland and uh, I'm writing. I'm writing season eight of Underwood and Flinch, and which I've, I've actually just started podcasting that at Patreon. I've podcast episode one uh, of season eight, which was, which was fun and uh, generally well received, I'm, I'm happy to say. In fact, it was completely well received. Everybody really enjoyed it. At least those people who commented uh, enjoyed it. But uh, to, to that point, um, do you remember a while ago um, I put out a, a kind of a bonus episode of Underwood and Flinch, um, season four, and it featured Ronnie Bishop talking about a girl called Isabel May and a mysterious figure called Vincent uh, and, you know, basically Isabel sort of disappeared um, and Vincent sort of shrugged and said, hey, I don't know anything about it. But uh, yeah, there's something definitely sinister about him, wasn't there? So anyway, I, I did a little poll uh, at Spotify and asked you to, you know, to pop over and, uh, you know, vote and and also do if you had any comments to share them with me. And some of you did. So uh, what are the results, you may wonder? Well, I'll tell you. The results of the Whatever Happened to Isabel May Would You Like to Find Out poll at Spotify were 41 votes, of which 32 said yes please, and the remaining nine uh, said surprise me. And your comments at Spotify on this issue were, let's just have a look, there's quite a few actually, there's um, 20 20 published responses, um, and you know they're, they're all they're all pretty in favour as well. Uh, Mark Kingsland said, "Great little story. Could be an interesting side story of a rogue acolyte of the Lord of someone from a different sect." Courtney Kelsey said, "Loved it. Definitely enjoying the 80s goth scene with the element of a mysterious vampire." Uh, Moon Witch vibes said, "Yes, I love all the episodes." Jan said it would be perfect to have another story going in this universe. I love to see you build this world bigger and hear it in my ears. Thank you for all the fun thus far. R-M-X-E-R-S uh, said, I did enjoy this cutscene. I always like that your characters are people that I'm sure I know. I want to find out about Vincent. And it was great the sisters got a mention. Brendan said, thanks, Mike, love the episode. Great idea to have the cutscene as a pod. Mm. Rob Igo said, just finish this episode as I've been behind. I like to save the episodes up and binge listen. He says, I think a spin-off would be another wonderful addition to the Underwood and Flinch catalogue. Matthew Willock said, indeed, as always, I very much enjoyed your reading of Bram Stoker's Dracula. I know this must be time consuming, but do you have any plans to read other classics of the genre? And my answer to that one is, have you heard my H.P. Lovecraft readings? They're all in a, a separate feed called The Vault of Lovecraft by Mike Bennett. Or alternatively, you can find them in this very feed that you're listening to right now. All my H.P. Lovecraft readings are in this feed, as are my readings of classic short stories by the likes of Edgar Allan Poe, Saki and others. So just look through this podcast feed and you'll find quite a few of my readings of classic fiction. Apart from that, I'm not going to be doing any new readings of classics because I'm too busy writing and recording Underwood and Flinch, which I think everyone will agree is probably the best use of my uh, creative time. But thank you, Matt, for, for your comment. So there we are. Thank you to all those people who commented and indeed to everyone for all the comments that you, you have left at Spotify. I do read them all and I approve them all as well. Uh, unless they're horrible, <laughs> and thankfully uh, none of them have been. So yes, all respondents there, very positive and interested in finding out the fate of Isabel May and Vincent. So um, I'm, I'm currently looking at ways of working that into uh, Underwood and Flinch Season 8. I see a couple of possible uh, places where we can find out um, and um, I'm not I'm not decided yet which one to use but I, I, I will use one of them and I will get uh, that 
kind of resolution, you know, to that story in there. Um, will it be a spin off in itself? I don't think so, not yet, but we will find out what happened to Isabel and indeed Vincent. <laughs> And so that naturally brings us to the Spotify question for this episode. And I thought, rather than just, you know, leaving it to the usual Spotify default question, what did you think of this episode? This time around, uh, I'd ask you something a bit more interesting. And it's this. <clears throat> Regarding the possible Underwood and Flinch television series, bearing in mind that the roles of Lord Underwood and David have already been cast, who would you like to see play Lydia Flinch? Because Lydia hasn't been cast yet, and she won't be until after the show gets sold and properly greenlit. So if that happens, then your suggestions, listener suggestions, you know, the people who know Lydia best, are going to be of interest to the producers, aren't they? The actress doesn't have to look exactly like my Lydia. Modern casting favours diversity. So she can be white, she can be black, she can be brown, she could be Asian. Uh, and since the producers would also be looking for a, a sort of a type of person, if there's no one living you fancy for the role, why not suggest someone who's dead, but for you would be the perfect Lydia type? Please leave your answers at Spotify in this episode's comments. To do that, you just tap on the episode at Spotify uh, and there you will see my question. Leave your comments there and I look forward to reading them, sharing them and reading some of them aloud on my next podcast episode. And for those of you who don't use Spotify but would like to let me know uh, through some other means, uh, I'm on Twitter at the Mike Bennett, and you can also find me on Facebook uh, Mike Bennett, author. And I'll also leave this question at Substack as well, for any Substackers out there. And the last thing, and I'm sure a lot of people are, are kind of wondering about this, is there any news on the Underwood and Flinch television series? And the answer to that is, I'm afraid, no. Um, reason being, and it, this is this was, it's, it's kind of frustrating, you know, that the uh, the people who were responsible for 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 doing the pitches to networks and streamers, that being the stars, uh, the executive producers uh, and the showrunner of, of the Underwood and Flinch television series. They were, they were all geared up and ready to, to start the pitches. It's taken a long time to get there, but they were finally ready and they were all set to go. And then the Writers Guild of America uh, went on strike and that has basically put the kibosh on things um, in Hollywood, you know, for any kind of new productions. So there's no point uh, in, in pitching anything to, uh, you know, companies over there because of that, you know. No no companies are thinking of, of starting anything, you know, until they know where they stand regarding the, the writer's strike situation until that's resolved. Um, I should point out that I do absolutely support the writers in what they're doing. They're trying to obviously get better terms and conditions, but also uh, to protect their, their jobs against AI, which is, uh, I was reading today actually, Bild newspaper in Germany is going to be sacking a load of their uh, editorial staff and replacing them with AI. So really, you know, the, the, uh, the Writers Guild of America are doing what they have to do to to uh, ensure that there is a, a future for humans in in the writing of um, TV and film entertainment. So all the best to them. Uh, it's just a pity <laughs> that that we didn't get Underwood and Flinch pitched and and hopefully sold before the strike. But you know, fingers crossed. Um, after the strike, the uh, the guys can pitch it and hopefully find a home for Underwood and Flinch in the future, and written by humans. So, yeah, uh, basically then, no news. No news on the TV show. It is still there. It hasn't gone away, you know, hasn't been scrapped. But, uh, yeah, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Keep an eye on the writer's strike you know, in, in the newspapers. And if you see it's being resolved, you can say, oh, good. Maybe this means that the Underwood and Flinch TV series will soon start pitching or being pitched. Um, we shall see. 
And that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. There's not, not a heck of a lot of other stuff going on. I will uh, now resume a monthly podcast going forward with any news and and I'll get I'll drag my wife into the show as well and we can talk about things like what we're watching on television and stuff. So do stay subscribed um, and I'll I'll uh, keep you up to date on everything uh, in my my little podcast here. Uh, so yeah, great, brilliant. Thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen. But for me, for now, it's pip pip and cheerio. Thank you.